Hi, welcome to Bear Witness. I'm Robert Perez. On the last video, it was all about the properties of water and all the science behind water itself. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at the skies. Well, what flies in them? No, it's not a bird. You'll see. So if you're excited, just like I am, sit tight, hang on, let's go. So today, we will be talking about the Bulldog Bat. With a soaring length of 3.5 inches and a wingspan of 17.3 inches, this bat is noticeable anywhere. So the Bulldog Bat is not just any normal bat. These bats are located in tropical central and southern America. Now, most bats have different diets, like the fruit bat. The fruit bat, its main diet, obviously, is fruit. This bulldog bat is different. Its main diet is frogs, insects, fish, and crustaceans. So speaking of their food, let's talk about how they hunt. These bats use sea echolocation, which means they use sound to hunt. So they hear a frog jump, or they hear a fish splash, or an insect fly, they know exactly where to go. So they will drag their claws through the water for several meters to get any fish at random. Insects will be taken from flight by their wings. Now frogs are a little different. Frogs are taken through their sharp claws or pounced down on top and eaten on the ground only because of their ability to jump long distances. So say a frog is here and the bat comes to swoop down to get it, it can jump and the bat will miss it and hit ground. So instead, this bat will wait and they see a frog jump and jump until it stops. Then it swoops down and holds it to the ground and then eats its prey that way. The bulldog bat does a lot of this at night, mainly because it is nocturnal, even its habitat. They prefer dark caves along the seashore. The bulldog bat can live for 11 years. So that's every year hunting at night using your echolocation. Now the echolocation, we have talked about it with the dolphins and with the manatees. So they use this every day. It is their main source. So every day they leave at night to hunt, to gather, and to find their mate. Now, mate is not necessarily hard to come by. They live in colonies from 30 to several hundred of individual bats living together in these caves hanging from upside down. Everybody knows everybody. It's like a small town crammed with people. You really won't have a hard time finding your mate or your loved one. Now let's talk about how they get their name. The reason why they are called the bulldog bat is because they have similar lips to a bulldog. So their lips are thicker and their upper lip hangs over their bottom one. Now their upper lip splits right in the middle and their nose and their nose is long and thick so almost every facial feature on this bat is thick and big now their ears are long and pointed kind of like an elf but their legs are also long with large feet that have developed claws now a lot of research have shown that these bats smell fishy mainly because their main diet again is fish or crustaceans which comes from the water so now that we have talked about their physical description i want to talk a little more in depth about what their colors look like because the males are different from the females in color because the male's body color ranges from bright orange yellow even brown now the females are a little bit different the females are just brown and gray. And you'll see this a lot. Just like with certain birds, the males would be more bright, more colorful, because they use those colors to attract the female, to get their attention, to lure them away from another male. Well, the bats do the same thing. The bats use these colors to attract their mate for mating season. So speaking of finding a mate, I want to talk about the reproductive cycle. So the female bulldog bats 
pregnancy will go September to January. And their lactation starts from November all the way to April. Now the cool thing about male bats is that they will only breed from autumn to winter. Which is really strange to me because you think, you know, they're inside all the time. How would they be like, oh, it's autumn. Let's, uh, let's, let's you know, let's have some offspring until winter and then I... It's just done. That has always stayed in my head. Like, why those times? Like, how does an animal know, okay, from here to here, it's breeding time. And from here to here, it's not. You know, it's like, how do they... It's just, it's crazy to me. And that is something that I'm researching more into because that's... I mean, it just mind boggles me. Like, I'm... Now, only one young bat is born each gestation. The young bat will stay in the roots for one month. After that, it is capable of flight. So for that one month, they're feeding off their mother's milk and they're eating whatever else their mother can bring them from her hunt. Also, learning from the other males and the other adolescents, learning on what to do and what not to do. So the good thing about the bulldog bat is that they are not in danger overall. They're not in danger of like poaching or being captured to go to museums or not even by other animals but their main threat is water pollution again these bats will go into the water to get their food also they drink out of it so when the water gets dirty they get sick and the more dirtier and dirtier and dirtier that this water becomes the more these bats get sick and die. Every aspect of our life has either a positive or a negative result. So say we just throw a plastic bottle into the ocean. Over time, the chemicals of that bottle will get into the water. And who knows, it could float all the way to Southern America or to Tropical Central and pollute this water, killing these bats. That's why you hear everybody say, keep our water clean, keep our water safe, don't litter, don't pollute the ocean. That's the reason, because it's not just us who are using it on a daily basis. It's our wildlife and our nature that relies on the water as well. But on a brighter note, they are producing at a healthy rate and they are not in danger of extinction. And I think that is a blessing in itself. I wanna thank you for watching today. This is Bear Witness, I'm Robert Bettis. Have a great day, bye.